everybody it's Gina here from Gina makes it welcome back to my channel in today's video I am making a vintage style photo album using some drawing paper and a piece of cardboard that I painted so a few weeks ago I created this folio using a free template that's on my website at ginamakesit.com and I wasn't sure at that point what I was going to do it could hold a traveler sized notebook but I decided that I didn't really want to make a traveler's notebook. I wanted to make more of like a vintage photo album to document Halloween just because I didn't really want to do a lot of journaling. <laughs> I kind of wanted just to use pictures um, and maybe a few sentences here or there. And so I thought the idea of a vintage photo album was kind of a neat idea where they kind of fold over on the front and the back. In a little bit, I show you, I have one that I picked up from an estate sale a couple weeks ago, and so I was sort of using that as a guide to how to create this. So I have this piece of cardboard. It's more like a, like a real thick piece of cardstock. I wouldn't call it cardboard, really. That came, or actually it comes, inside of my photo paper, my matte photo paper. I don't know why it's in there, but it's always just like stuck in with the rest of the paper. I guess maybe just to give the whole pack a little bit of stability. So I've been keeping them, but I haven't really been knowing what to do with them. So I decided to use it and paint it with just some regular black acrylic paint and use it as my cover. I wanted something a little bit thicker than cardstock, but I didn't want something so thick as cardboard. So this was a nice sort of in between. So I'm just sizing it down so it'll fit inside of that folio. And so I end up cutting it at four and three quarters by eight inches. And so now I'm going to score that area on the cover and the back cover where it kind of folds over. So I'm going to score it at three quarters of an inch. And this is really a weird like piece of paper. It's very thick and plus it has that layer. I, I think I did about three coats of the acrylic paint on it. And so it's like not wanting to be scored <laughs> really. So I'm trying to, trying to do it delicately. And I also knew that there was a high probability that the paint was going to crack. So I was trying to be very careful. And I knew that the part that I was going, that I was bending was going to be on the inside cover and you would never really see that part of the crack because it would be flat. So I decided to use a little, my little uh, awl, paper awl, and it helped me create a bit of a stronger score. So there is my cover and that might start to look reminiscent of what you think of when you think of a vintage photo album. And here I'm doing the back cover and I'm doing it the same exact way that I did the front cover, but I'm falling into the same trap where it's thick and it's kind of wonky with that acrylic paint on there. So now I'm going to pull out my copy of my vintage photo album just to make sure that I'm bending it the right way because I couldn't really remember which way it was supposed to go. So here is that vintage photo album and you can see how the cover folds up and the back cover folds out like that. And so I just wanted to make sure that I was folding it in the right way. So instead of those bolts that you saw in that one, I'm actually going to use two grommets and then I'm going to feed some ribbon through and, and close it that way, which I've seen vintage photo albums use like a cord or a ribbon too. So for the inside, I'm just using some very old drawing paper. Uh, you could see it's really kind of aged around the edges and that's what I liked. So it's on the thinner side, so it does rip a little bit easier than the cover did, but that's okay because I don't mind those little rips when I'm cutting it because it kind of adds to the whole vintage feel of it. So I'm gonna score this the same way. Now it is connected uh, at the top and I was trying to do them all at the same time, but again, it was a little bit too thick, so I had to separate it and score each one into individually.
Now that I'm done scoring it and I folded them, I need to figure out where to put my holes. So I'm just measuring the middle and since it is eight inches, obviously the middle is four and then the middle of four is two and then the middle of the top one would be six. And so that's exactly where I am going to put my holes to put my grommets or my eyelets inside of. So I'm just going to paper clip it down and I'm going to have the paper on top just because it'll be easier for me to see the dot and then I'm going to take my crop a dial and I'm going to punch two holes and then I'm going to set two eyelets on the cover and then I'm going to set two more eyelets on the back cover. I decided to make a few more pieces of paper for the inside because I felt like it was a little light and because this is just set with eyelets and tied with ribbon it's very easy to take in and out the pages that you want to add or take away depending on your usage. So it's a very versatile type journal or photo album. So basically I'm just repeating the same process. I'm trimming my paper. I'm going to uh, score at three quarters of an inch and then I'm going to add some additional holes. Everything is assembled now and so I have that vintage hem tape that I used in that folio and I thought that it would be a nice way to keep this closed. So I just wrapped it around a paper clip that I kind of unbent and I'm pulling it through, uh, wrapping it around and pulling it through and it really worked out quite well. So I end up changing the way that I tie this. At first I tie it at a bow right now but after I decorate the cover I actually realize that I don't want the bow on the front and I'm just going to tie a knot in the back to keep it closed. But I have to say that it really turned out very nice. I was expecting the paint to chip a lot more than it did. I'm not sure if it was just luck or what was going on but you can see it really does look like a little vintage photo album and it was very easy to make and again just like the open spine concept with my garden planner and that other little notebook that I made I'll link those videos down below. I like it because you're not tied to a certain amount of pages so you don't feel like you have to fill up a certain amount and you can take away or put in as many as you want. It's a nice little notebook. So I'm just going to stick it into my little folio here and see if it fits and it fits perfectly and I just really like the way that it looks. It's like a complete little package. So of course I couldn't help myself and I had to start decorating it. I have these butter, these black butterflies that I got from the dollar store a couple years ago. I used to have a Halloween tree that I would decorate, but it became too much, you know, because then it was like every season I decorated this big, huge tree and it was just too much and they got too dusty and I just have now, you know, sworn off all trees other than one for Christmas. Although this year I don't even know if we'll have one because we do have a new cat. And I have read that cats like to jump on top of Christmas trees. So we'll see how that goes. But these were two little ornaments that uh, fell apart. And so they were just kind of put to the side. And I thought that they would look really nice. I mean, who doesn't like a butterfly on a Halloween cover? I just think it looks really, really pretty. So I had to glue one back together and kind of pull off the clip. And then as I'm kind of fooling around with the butterfly, I remembered I had some more stuff from the dollar store that I got a couple years ago. I got some black like 
it's not lace. It's like a, it's not even a mesh. It's like, I don't even know what you would call it, but here it is. <laughs> I don't, I know if anyone knows what this is called, please do let me know and leave a comment below because I'm not sure what I would call. It's like a shawl sort of, but not really. It's sort of for like a tablescape. Uh, and when you cut it, it really does come apart, but it looks kind of webby and, and spooky. And so I thought it would look nice underneath this butterfly. And as I was uh, working in it, I thought it would be nice to add a little spider as well. So you can see here I'm changing the direction of my bow and I end up taking the bow out and actually moving everything to the back side. And that's what I'm doing here because I just didn't want too many elements interfering with the cover. And what's nice about this is that I won't be able to work in this with the cover decorated, but I could just simply pull off the cover and work in it that way and it kind of makes it a little bit less cumbersome to work with. So as I was saying, I was thinking about what else I could add to this cover and I remember I had some of those spider rings, uh, like plastic spider rings from a few years ago when I was helping out with some Halloween parties at my kids' school. So I grabbed a couple of those and I cut off the bottoms and then I also remembered that I had this very old Tim Holtz paper pad. This is like an eight by eight one and I want, cause I wanted to add a word Halloween, but I didn't want to stamp it again. Cause I felt like I was doing that a lot. Now these words were way too long to add. So I just end up cutting out the 31, doing a little distressing to the edges and then adding that spider to the cover as well. And I had to pull the spider off of like an old cobweb decoration that I had in the basement. So it had like a little bit of spider web remnant. And so I thought that it also added a little bit of contrast to the cover. So that is the cover of my little vintage photo album for Halloween. Like I said, I'm just going to add photos to it. I'm not going to do like full journal layouts because I just don't have time to do that. But I thought that this was a nice alternative to that. And right now I'm just trying to see if it's easy for me to take off the cover because I did get a little nervous because that butterfly wing is slightly delicate, but I just figured out that I could pull it straight up off of that ribbon and to just thread it through when I'm finished uh, working in it. And so it's going to work out really, really well. I might take off a little bit of that white, just kind of thin it out just a little bit. Um, because as I'm looking at it now, it looks a little thick to me, but I don't know. We'll see. I was playing around with adding another spider. I don't know. I might still add one, but I did want to add the year 2021 to the top. So I might do that as well still. So that's going to wrap up today's video. As always, thank you so much for supporting my YouTube channel and my little Etsy store. I really do appreciate it. I'll see you next time.